Hi, Lourdes here with Wellhaven and Associates. And in this brief presentation, I'm going to be talking to you about generating leads for your business, what you can do to generate some additional leads for your business. And when you get them, what you're supposed to do with them for maximum impact. Because here's the thing, you're putting in the time, the effort and the money to bring in business to your business. But is it generating qualified leads for your business? Is it actually leading to money in your pocket? If not, well, you know, maybe there's something we can do about it. In fact, more than maybe I know that there is. Because most people will simply put an ad in, in say, the newspaper or online or on Google or on Facebook or TV or radio or what have you or in a magazine and they get all these prospects in and certainly they have you know a plan to help those those prospects that come and are ready to buy but what happens to those that aren't ready in that moment to purchase well you know if you don't have a follow-up sequence for every prospect not just those that are ready to buy but not just every prospect but even your existing customer base well you're leaving money on the table. You're not really taking advantage of all of that your efforts could bring to you. The concept is simple, actually, of what to do. It's just a matter of doing it, to be quite honest with you. What you want to do is to help your prospects and customers to define themselves through an ongoing communication funnel for increased sales. So let's break this down a little bit further. First, we talked about helping your prospects and customers to define themselves. And then we talked about through ongoing communication funnels. So let's talk first about what I mean by define themselves. By define themselves, I mean that their actions, not what they tell you, not what you would like for them to be, not what you think they ought to be, not what they think they ought to be, but through their actions, they will tell you how to relate to them on an ongoing, forward going basis. Let me give you an example. Let's say that you launch a campaign of some sort and you have a hundred people come through your business. That would be wonderful, wouldn't it? So let's say that you have a hundred people come through your, your business, 10% of those actually purchase your product. You have 90 that aren't ready right now. Well, that tells you something about those 90. They didn't purchase. They may not be ready right now. They may not ever be ready. Now, what if you could do something a little bit different for those 90? You could communicate with them, encourage them to take another step forward towards you, if you will, right? Towards your product or service. Some of them will and some of them won't. Those that will, well, they're a little bit of a warmer lead, aren't they? Those that won't either are not interested or not interested right now. So even though there may be those that are saying, Oh my gosh, you know, I love this and I'm really interested and I want to do business with you. If they're not willing and able to take a step forward, whatever that step forward is, and it depends on each different company, but if they're not willing to take a step forward to towards you, then they're not ready right now and maybe never. So, this is a way that you can sort of parse, if you will, your prospects and customers so that you know how to relate to them better. Now, let's talk about the next portion of it. And don't worry if you don't understand this, because we're going to get into some examples. The next portion of it is the ongoing communication funnel. So you will initiate and continue the communication with your prospects and customers through education and offers according to their definition, or I like to say their preferences. 
So in that first example where you had 100 potential prospects come in, 10 of them bought your product or service, 90 are left, okay? Now you're going to continue the communication with them, be it through direct mail, through an email newsletter, through something targeted towards them, and you're gonna see who reacts, how they react, and how you can change your offer to make it more palatable to them perhaps, or to make it more in line with what they need, or to maybe even educate them a little bit further so that they understand why they need your product or service. I hope that makes sense. But let's go on because again, I'll get to some real world examples in just a little bit. So let's talk first about how to initiate the process. You have an ad out there, right? Somewhere in the world. And now how do you, how do you go from that? Well, first the initial communication, whether it be an ad or it be something online or you've met someone in person or at a trade show or at a networking event, it doesn't matter. The concept is the same. Basically, you want to prove your value, your company's value and offer something of value so that your prospect and customer will allow and positively anticipate additional communication from you. So let's take that first example again. You initiated with some kind of promotional campaign, 10% bought. They're awesome. They're buyers. They're on your buyers list. 90 or 90% did not, right? Well, now with those 90%, you want to offer them something that sets you apart, that gives you credi credibility, that gives them something of value for free, and that they will want to give you willingly in order for you to receive permission for you to, to continue to communicate with them. So for example, you might give them, might ask them, gosh, you know, we'd love to send you coupons or special offers to our insiders club. Can we have your email address or can we have your, your home address or whatever? Where should we mail these coupons to? Something like that. So that you're getting their information, they're taking a step forward. If they say no, then you know, hey, they're not interested, okay? Or they're not interested right now, or they're not interested in that offer, or you haven't proven your value. Any one of those things are possible, or they're not a good fit, it doesn't matter. You're continuing the dance, you're not getting down on yourself, you're not getting down on them, you're just continuing that communication process instead of ignoring that 90% that didn't immediately jump to your offer. So remember, value is in the eye of the beholder, as it were. It should be something that your target market specifically wants. So for example, let's say that you own a pest control company, as an example, and maybe you offer them a coupon for a, an, an in-home evaluation. You offer them an inspection to see whether or not they have, um, you know, certain pests in their homes, or you offer them um, a one-time trial of your service. I, I'm not sure. I would suspect that a one-time trial may not prove your value, but perhaps in the extermination business, using that as an example, that maybe offering them an inspection to let them know where they stand as far as pests in their homes, that maybe that would make sense. Maybe termites are an issue in your area. So maybe you can do some kind of termite evaluation. And that's something that a homeowner could potentially value, right? And so from there, they give you their information, you continue the dance, and then you can offer them additional products and services. So let me give you some more examples. You might offer in exchange for that permission that you are going for to continue the communication. 
insider only specials announcements or coupons and ladies I know that you know this one well I know that when I go to shop at certain stores they often ask me for my email address and they'll say would you like to be on our email newsletter we'll send you a a coupon or we'll send you announcements from time to time and I generally love to take advantage of those because the specials are usually pretty awesome so I know we've all seen some of those maybe you'll want to offer a problem solving report or reports of some sort in in your niche maybe you're solving a problem for people and if there's some kind of special report or ebook or whatever that you could offer something that is low cost to you that you create once you can do that in exchange for permission to send them email or written communication maybe you'll conduct a local workshop or webinar a lot of financial planners do this you'll see that they'll invite people in a certain area and a certain demographic for dinner to talk about investment strategies and they'll give them dinner and what have you and that's what they're offering something for free in exchange of meeting you meeting people and then putting them on their communication list a stripped down version of your paid product this happens in software a lot where you'll get the free version of a product that does almost everything you need just enough so that you can kind of give it a, a try and make sure that you like it that works very well at least it works very well for me a physical sample of a product especially if something is ongoing something that's that's going to be used over and over and over again you know in the mail a few weeks ago I got a sample of a new laundry detergent that was really kind of fun and here it came in the mail and it was a sample hey give this a try wash your clothes with this see what you think I thought that was really kind of neat and a promotional item of value swag swag is something that you can utilize to continue that communication with someone or even initiate that communication with someone promotional items are great in particular because they're branded with your logo your company logo and then you know they have something wonderful that they can keep after the fact with your name on it so once you you know have their name and and information you've begun the dance as it were what do you do then some people have purchased maybe most have not what happens then well you continue the communication process in other words you develop a list from what you've done and you develop a database and you develop that database in a way that your customers and prospects will parse themselves into different categories you'll see this picture here of a bell curve some customers and prospects will buy immediately those you'd find on the right side of the curve some are going to drop off not be interested at all those you're going to find at the left side of the curve most are going to be somewhere in the middle they just need more information they just need to know like and trust you first before they do business with you and your continual wanted okay and permission given communication that's appropriate to them is going to make them go to one side of the curve or the other so that they can determine for themselves yes I'm interested no I'm not or maybe I am one day now what does that mean here's the thing categories for your prospects and customers aren't good bad nor are they indifferent it simply helps you to become more efficient in your communication strategy as you get more and more into this your customers and prospects are actually going to parse themselves even further some customers are going to be amazing just about everything that you ever offer to them they're going to want they're going to be your a number one list that you're going to really love on and they're going to love you right back some people are going to drop off immediately and not want to do any business with you and that's cool and there's going to be some customers that want to do business with you every now and then and some only for certain things so people over time and depending on your communication and the questions that you ask and you ask that really kind of subtly through your promotional campaigns 
they're going to parse themselves out into different categories. And from those categories, you'll be able to develop campaigns directed just to them based on what they're looking for from you. And remember, there's not like a good customer or a bad customer or a good prospect or a bad prospect or nothing like that. No one's good, bad, or indifferent. They just are. And you just need to know how to relate to all of them. And through continual, ongoing, measured, planned communication with them in creative and fun ways, you'll be able to do just that. So you'll communicate with your database in a way that is most appealing to them as individuals, even though they're going to be in different categories over time, depending on how they buy and how they react to your promotional campaigns and such. Still, by putting them into different categories, it's really defining them in relation to you, and they will feel more and more as if you understand them and are relating to them as individuals, and that's exactly what you want. So you'll have a follow up and follow through sequence to remain top of mind and to make more offers depending upon how they react to you. How they react to you is basically them telling you, I want to hear more about you. I want to hear more from you or I want to hear less. And what they need, and what they want is what you'll give them. In this way, you'll spend your resources wisely on those that want you now while continuing the dance with those that will likely want you a little bit later. In this way, the resources that you've spent in meeting prospects and customers is optimized. So you're not just going out there and just throwing one campaign after the other, after the other, after the other, and not getting to the meat of the matter, not being doing that which makes most sense for you and for your, your customer. You know, you can't be everything to all people, of course. But, you know, some customers may want your premium products. Some may not need your pure premium products. Even if they have the ability to buy them, they may not need it. In the case of the exterminator, why would you continue to do promotional campaigns about termites if that customer doesn't have termites? right? That doesn't make sense. Maybe they have ants. Let's talk about ants. But you don't know that if you don't structure campaigns in such a way that allows them to parse themselves, if you would, into different categories so that you know how to speak to them. Okay. So the most important points that I hope that you'll take away from this is that if you'll be purposeful with your marketing efforts, whatever they may be, your results will improve. If nothing else, remember that. Number two, just by increasing communication with your prospects and customers, you'll be ahead of the game. Most companies don't do one or two at all. They are neither purposeful nor consistent and they barely communicate. They do a one-off campaign, Whatever happens, happens, and then they start again from the beginning. If you would just not do that, you would see a, an increase in your business, no doubt. And number three, the most important asset in your business is your database, your names list. If you give them what they want from you, you'll be able to serve them for years to come. And number four, you can only learn what they, your database, wants by interacting with them over time, by creating campaigns such that they can separate themselves into what they want from you. So listen to that, take advantage of that, take it in, think about it, and craft your campaigns accordingly such that you're continuing your campaigns to your prospects and customers in a way that makes most sense. So do you want to see this in action for yourself, how I do it? Well, here's the thing. If you go to my website, www.wellhavenandassociates.com slash leads, note that there's only one L in Wellhaven, but if you go to wellhavenandassociates.com slash leads, you'll see this video on the web page and you'll also be able to join my list 
and get further ideas on how to increase the effectiveness of your marketing efforts. When you join my list from time to time, I will email you and let you know some ideas on how to bring more business to your business. So join my list below and let's see when I continue our very own dance. Thanks for listening.